Well, for the first debate, I like to look back at history. And if you look at the debate between Kennedy and Nixon in 1962, I think it was, where Nixon broke out in a sweat, that debate won the election for John Fitzgerald Kennedy. He was just as cool as a cucumber. He had all the, the face makeup and uh, he, he had the glass of water at the ready. Um, he, he, he studied the topics. He was on top of his game and he answered each question succinctly. And that's what you've got to do, Donald. You've got to learn what the word succinctly means or concisely. Stay on topic. Talk less, listen more. We have one, two ears, one mouth. Keep it in that proportion at this debate with Joe Biden and let him waffle on and waffle on because if you give him enough rope, he's going to do the gaff machine routine for sure. And uh, look, if the if the lovely old man needs to sit down, offer to get him a chair. Um, if he's uh, drooling, pass him a serviette, um, keeping your distance, of course. Um, and if he needs to take a break every 30 minutes because of the early onset dementia uh, and the early onset Alzheimer's, and the early onset fuckwiditis, let him. In fact, let him win this first debate. It really doesn't matter on this occasion. Just be presidential, try to channel Kennedy, or my namesake, Reagan. I pronounce it Reagan, and so does my mother. God bless her soul. But just look like a president. You've really just got to look good. In this debate, you've got nothing to prove. Everybody know, even your enemies know all your achievements. And secretly, even some of the Democrats, the moderate Democrats, deep down, they know that you've done a pretty awesome job. And um, we all make mistakes, and you've made a few. But your achievements have far outweighed setbacks and I'm not blaming you for the COVID either I think I think you've done a reasonable sort of a job in handling the COVID I know 200,000 deaths is 200,000 too many but the backdrop is you've got a population in America of 320 or 30 million which is a big number plus you would have been onto it a lot sooner had uh, China done the right thing and um, and shut down all travel to and from their airports and you were the first leader in the world to stop air travel to and from China and the Democrats condemned you for it. They called you xenophobic. They said you are a racist. So it's just a matter of... Uh, they're, they're running with the foxes and hunting with the hounds. They're trying to be... Uh, it's just like kids in the sandpit fighting over who gets the spade, um, as in shovel. And um, they're always doing their tantrums, like the little kid in the supermarket because he doesn't get his bag of lollies. Do not engage with them when they're mucking around like that. Just be presidential, carry on and answer the questions that are put to you succinctly, concisely. Let the old man sit down in a chair if he needs to because if you keep standing and he's sitting, the optics are what will win you a second term President Trump the optics and it is the perception if you look like a world lead people at the back of their minds they're thinking who would i like to see in control on the world stage who would represent america better you or biden now if he's requesting breaks every 30 minutes 
give him a ventilator. He might need a bit of oxygen. I don't know. But, um, and come on stage with your mask on, okay? And, and just remove it to answer each question, but put it back when, you, when you're listening, okay? That's very important because you need to teach the country to wear masks because in high-risk areas, wearing masks is very vital. And uh, that would be my only advice from Lord Riggs of Oz, down under. My grandfather was born in San Francisco in 1880. He came to Australia in 1906 after the San Francisco earthquake. Long story. And Adeline Stanhope was a, uh, a New York Broadway actress up until 1917 at the Empire Theatre. That's on Broadway. And she was my great-grandmother. And her son to another fellow called Nelson Wheatcroft produced uh, Charlie Stanhope and Charlie Stanhope Wheatcroft and he was in 55 films with Charlie Chaplin. So anyway, Adeline died in 1935 and she's buried at West Hollywood Cemetery. So they're my reasons for having a vested interest in American politics. From down under in Australia, lower New England at Elveston, this is Lord Riggs of Oz wishing you a very, very successful debate. Make it not too boring. Throw in a few jokes and go easy on the personal attacks. I'd avoid them at all costs.